For the latest top tips, reviews and advice, please subscribe below. Hello and welcome to At Wars Outdoors with me, Mike. Today you guys a bit of a review video on a very exciting uh, and very new tent from Dometic. So this is the Dometic Ascension TC. Now, a few things probably to clear up before we start going forward is Dometic are kind of a new brand to the market in many ways, but they're also not. What kind of camper have many done for the 2021 season is they've actually sort of split off the two brands that we saw last year, the camper Dometic, created a camper range and Dometic range. Camper being more price orientated, Dometic being more premium. Essentially the whole kind of um, Dometic collection tents is really just down to creating the best possible product they could. Chucking every little feature they thought they could put on a tent um, and little quirky things, you know, and that, that sort of plays out. And immediately this actually probably sits above near enough every tent on the market in terms of spec um, and size, but then it also that kind of equivalates in price as well. You know, you're looking around about 10% more for this kind of Dometic model or Dometic range across the board, but then you get arguably more than 10% of the features. So this is available in two different sizes. It's in a 601 and then also a 401. So essentially a six person or a four person. Really you're a really nice sort of free zone tent. So you've got sleeping, living, and then an enclosed front awning section. This is the TC model, so it's the sort of technical cotton, so poly cotton material. So with that sort of thing, you get the best of fact of breathability. So on a sort of warm day, it's a lot cooler inside um, because we can expand allow air to pass through. But then also on a cold day, the weave can tracks and keeps the warmth in. So generally, you're better off in all aspects. That was a skill. One thing you also find as well is that in terms of its lifespan, it will last an awful lot longer. You know, you probably get two, if not times three times the length of, well, product life that you would in comparison to so normal polyester. So not only do you benefit from having longevity, breathability, it's quieter in the wind, it's more of a sort of a natural fabric, it sits nicer and it feels more, I use the word natural, it's, it's cozy rather than sort of synthetic. Immediately, it does mean that the price point goes up for one, for poly cotton. Uh, in terms of its pack weight, it's bigger, it's heavier of course as well, uh, and it takes a little bit longer to dry, but providing you don't mind those sort of sort of slight negatives, really it is worth it. One thing to bear in mind is that if you are going across to say Europe or, um, you know, especially well, mainland Europe I should say, really you need to be looking at polycotton, just because their temperatures and the UV levels they have there are a little bit beyond kind of what we have in the UK. For UK market, you can just about get away with polyester. Admittedly on a warm day, as it's getting warmer, you know, you find that the internal temperature of polyester can be a bit stifling, a bit stuffy, um, whereas this is much more comfortable, more natural. Really what you're looking at here is kind of, like I said, this is their, the creme de la creme of kind of tents. What they try to do is almost create a complete flagship model which everything else sits beneath. And it's, oddly, it makes Empire look cheap, which you don't really see because Empire tends to be sort of top end price point. You've got unique features in this. So you've got obviously reflective guide points, you've got storm straps on the front, which works really well. You've got this really, really kind of boxy, almost like safari kind of like frame. So very vertical uprights, give you sort of good interior height. Um, and means that in theory, like, because you've got, you maximize your space. And one thing probably in the past camper had a bit more criticism about was kind of these sloping sides. And it meant you couldn't really use the bottom end tail of space into the corners. Now you can you know arguably it's probably got one of the straightest sides on the market tables and chairs and whatever you can put up can be right up to the side and it maximizes your footprint you know it's a 460 wide for the uh, 601 and we've done a separate video on the 401 so you want to kind of feel kind of the difference in terms of size you can always check that out uh, on our own youtube channel the overall length fit is about six uh, seven six five so it's under that sort of eight meter so it will fit on a standard pitch you know eight by six um, or eight by five, depending on where you go. It'll, but you know, it's designed almost on kind of the footprint size, overall size of the Studland Eight from Camper, going back in the years. So, you know, it doesn't really go out points of those. Other unique features is the fact you've got a, a, a zip-on annex, so you can buy an annex, a zip-on there. So you suddenly you've got your little sort of storage area. Um, so it just means that you can utilise the main part of the tent itself. You've got these beautiful big crystal clear windows, and again, there's almost like this little bit of trim just around the windows. Little things like that just kind of help to make it feel a bit more premium. Not only have you got storm struts on the front, but you've also got, you've got kind of um, the one peg-in system where you can 
peg the base and it'll peg the guide point at the same time, which means that you just go along pegging each point out and you haven't got to worry about double pegging everything. You can also see how quick, simple and easy it was for myself to pitch this model on our own at walls pitching and packing videos. It took myself best part of 15, 16 minutes to peg this thing on my own and pump it up. And that's the other thing as well is because you've got kind of these beam structures, actually you've got this oversized 12 centimeter beam. So again, really strong TPU tube. So again, reliable, which they've used for many, many years. But kind of the, uh, with the oversized beams, you're also getting a much sort of higher grade pump. So you're getting kind of the camper or Dometic drown, downdraft pump. So you're running around about 10 PSI into these beams just to really help firming up. And that helps again to keep this a really nice sort of kind of, like I said, safari tent kind of structure really strong when you need it to be. They've tested it quite a lot on sort of wind tunnels and rain testing to make sure that the water seeps away properly and it stands up to the winds and they wouldn't put a product into market that isn't. Other things you see that are quite unique if you've got these kind of uh, top point ventilation points and then big PVC window, low level ventilation point. So you've got this whole kind of airflow system going around and the ability to close it up from the inside, again, makes it quite unique as well. Small little details is where this kind of stands out in many ways. So for example, um, you've got like poppers everywhere. Um, so things like so access to each beam is done individually um, and you're pumping up as you go along. The valve is located under here. And actually if there's little poppers, just kind of keeping the actual, you know, you've got like a gusset or, or a skirt over the top of it. And again, it means that access points to the actual valves is much easier because you can kind of, again, open and contract it. And you're using kind of a little Boston valve system. So it just, again, easy to use, it's been around for a number of years now. Other features to mention as well is you've got kind of the, not only the easy point pegging system, but you've got color coded pegging system as well. So you start with kind of the front orange straps and the main four corners, you peg those first, and then you kind of go there from pumping it up. You've got this new unique system, which you probably can't see, we'll go on to it a bit later on, um, but there's actually a sort of an inserting pole at the back along this back section. And towards the end of the video, we do a complete 360 little view around the Ascension and talk about it all really. But that little pole is basically designed for a rear storage area we've got right at the back, just to give a bit more kind of, well, space and again, make the tent feel bigger than it actually is and you can utilize it. The front obviously is completely kind of enclosed and you've got this whole big, nice panel as well. So. The versatility of the front door is that you can kind of have it a third, two thirds or fully open to the point you can actually even zip it off. You've got additional um, kind of um, zips as well. So if you can, you can almost kind of create um, a, a door scenario where you can either go from right to left or left to right. Uh, and depending on whether this is gonna be the exact sample is sometimes there's also a zip to create a veranda, but that's not 100% confirmed just yet. You've also got things, not only have you got an enclosed kind of front from the wind and rain, but also privacy. So there's curtains in the front of all these panels, the whole kind of front section here, you can get that ultimate privacy. And like I said, because you can chop and change the doorway, if the wind or rain changes, again, you can open, have one door open or the next day, have this door open here, here as well. But overall, it's quite a unique model uh, and we'll talk a few more features about kind of the Ascension and why it sits at the top of the range and is tried to be almost like the Rolls Royce tents. But let's have a little look on the inside uh, and see what else to offer. So now we're kind of in the Ascension, you can kind of get a bit more idea for certain the zones you've got in the tent. And we'll start at the front and work our way gradually back. Now, we'll start with the front door, which we saw from the outside. Now, just to give you almost a perfect amount of uh, visibility, we'll open this up completely. What you can also do is be kind of ultimately lazy and uh, remove the front panel. So if you wanted a completely open canopy again, you can just unzip it completely and just take that whole door section off. What I'm going to do is just be a bit of a lazy roll rather than tie it all up. I'm just going to fold it in half and just roll it out of the way. Again, you just leave it kind of in a big heap. almost in the corner and then you don't really sort of notice it's there. And now we kind of open up the front section. You can see kind of the, the, the divisional door between the awning section and the main living area. Now this is kind of divided up uh, again, similar to the front door in sort of three sections. So you can either have it sort of third open or two thirds open, but then you've got a solid panel on the end. Now you've got an option of kind of a complete 
kind of PVC window in every three sections. So it almost means that when you want that sort of complete, well, a great visibility around the council, you can still have that, but then you've got curtains every section to get the privacy. So it's just almost this one big window. What you find again with a lot of the brands is the door scenarios always just a blanket door. Fabric, you can't see through, but you haven't got the extra detail of having zip curtains or extra windows in it. So it's these small details that make kind of the essential what it is. Other things to bear in mind is that every single kind of zip point, you've got a sort of like Toblerone kind of size, style oversized puller. So it means it's much easier to grasp and pull along. Other things as well, every single kind of retaining point which you've got here is a physical little webbing clip. So you've got webbing strap, also a buckle, and it just clips into the buckle. So you find that the actual strap itself is oversized, making it much easier, even the biggest and bulkiest things to clip in place. And then you can also then tension it. It's not kind of a case of a little bit elastic into a toggle point, it, it makes a big difference. Again, you've got almost the two layers against it. So you've got your sort of wind layer against it, your bug layer against it, your mesh, and that again comes all the way through. So you can have that whole, so have that front door open on, a, on an evening, for example, when it's nice and warm. You have a lantern in here. You've got airflow coming through kind of this mesh door here, but then you also have um, just protection, really. So it, you get the best of both worlds when it comes to that. Again, if you want it kind of to create this all kind of very versatile living space, what you can do is unzip this section here. It will then kind of, once you've unpegged it, again, you can kind of just roll it back. And it also kind of Velcros to the point around there. So it means that you can actually more than happily just kind of uh, get that ultimate amount of seal. So it okay, doesn't zip along the bottom, but the Velcro kind of gives you a similar sort of scenario. And what you can then do is this then point can physically zip down. So you drop it down, you lay it flat, you peg it down, and all of a sudden you've got a sort of trip free access into the main living area. And like I said, by having that kind of almost that dead end space aside, it really quite lends itself well to using it for sort of a cooking area. So you've got a cooking area, a storage area, and it all kind of keeps quite nicely there as well. In the main sort of living area, it's quite spacious. So not only, like I said, we've got that sort of height thing. So I'm six foot two and I can stand up pretty much dead in the corner there, which means, like I said, it maximizes your area. So it feels a little bit bigger than it is. In terms of, sort of if you compare it to probably our models, which be sort of like the Van Gogh Anatara, for example, it's maybe it's not in biggest in terms of height spine, but usability space, it feels just as big. Now, everywhere you see, you've got these brig, crystal clear windows, you've also got uh, privacy curtains. So, and these again zip up. One thing that makes a difference well is that actually they're in a physical pocket pocket rather than just kind of the zips holding in place. So you've got little poppers, again, keeping everything in place. You can just then kind of unravel, zip it up fully to the top to get the ultimate amount of privacy. Alternatively, if you wanted to, for example, you can just kind of have it down halfway, flip it over the top, and then you're good to go again. Alternatively, like you said, most people will probably do, is just have it down to the bottom. Uh, and again, you can, don't have to be the best at rolling it away, but you can just literally kind of unravel it, chuck it in the pocket, and then toggle the little kind of, not toggle, clip, holds it neatly in place. We saw from the outside, you've got this mesh window at the top of here as well. And again, what you can do is you can have the ability to open and close it from the inside. So the weather does turn, you've still got easy access to that as well. You put it. You've got a really nice, strong sort of PE kind of ground sheet as well to keep it all nice and sturdy. And as we talked about that in the oversized beams as well. Other things to mention is the fact that it's, it's like I said, the nitty gritty details. Things like your hanging point for a lantern is actually a, a, a metal carabiner, and that's not only on one single point, you've got it on every single point, including one in kind of the awning area. So you've got multiple flexibility, and not only that, for when you put, put the cable away and it, take it down to your cable entry point. Again, these little webbing straps with little poppers. So you can just do it easily with one hand. It's just, again, makes it feel a bit more premium. With cable entry, you've got one on either side and also one on the front. So it doesn't really make a difference where the cable or main hook of it's coming from. You can more than happily accommodate it. When we come into sort of the bedroom section, you've got kind of uh, two things going on, really. So this is definitely a very generous size. So 
a six person, it's true six really, you know, you've got a 140, 140 and the sort of master 160 dead in the middle. So it means that you've got your sort of, yeah, your main sort of family bedroom and the kids can go either side. So it's a true, true six berth. If you want the extra bit of space, what you can obviously do is then a zip divide between the sections so you can open it all up. So you can have it as one big open bedroom if you really wants to, or a four and a two, two and a four, or, or three, two. So again, it's having flexibility for the user. Either side, sort of the two ways go back to the door center. You've got actually a mesh door on either side. There's also a rain safe canopy on this left hand side as well. So you can come and go through this door without the water coming, well, rain dripping down and coming in. And again, it's the, it's the detailing things like this. So for example, the mesh panel, for example, it's actually got, um, it's not fully, it's way it's fully mesh, but you've got this kind of material based kind of footer to it. And again, that adds price to it, but it looks really flush. It flows really nicely. And it just kind of is very in keeping with the external door. You've got an aluminium pole for a brow pole as well. And again, that sort of small things lap just keeps adding the price up to, well, adding the price up, but shows you what you're paying for. It's probably the best way of putting it. Um, again, things like the inner tent itself, it's a poly cotton base. So things like these, you're not using cheaper materials on here is kind of why, you know, what the price point is, what the price point is. Big ventilation point at the top as well to allow airflow in. And again, it zips down and you've got, again, these little toggle popper clips to sort of seal it all up. They've got a new kind of palmet system. I'd, I'd call it a palmet system. It's this little part where the inner attaches. It's unique and again, it's something that's been sort of, that's putting a painting on it. It just means that it flows really nicely and it has again that sort of safari tent kind of feel. Same, not only have you got one at the top, but you've got one at the bottom. So you've got this kind of actual ground sheet overlap. So it means again, you've got no trip hazard into the main part and a lowly sculptured kind of bottom door allow you to come in and out quite happily. You've got storage pockets built into it again to sort of declutter the main body of the actual living area uh, and just kind of getting put things like keys, phones and books and things like that. With the extra annex we saw on the other side, you can actually put a wardrobe pole in as well to kind of declutter the, again, the main part of the tent and the ground sheet comes included with the annex. The annex is an optional extra. Uh, and again, you can get it in kind of a polyester version or poly cotton. Um, also, it kind of then matches the fabric really nicely. And I do really like the color of this. I think it just pops and looks very kind of premium-esque. You've got a kind of sleep type bedroom scenario, so really quite nice and dark. And then one of these unique features again is you've got a whole full width back storage section. So you've got tons and tons of room to sort of de declutter the main body and you've got low level ventilation. But I'm saying stand up behind here, a decent amount of space. And I tell you, let's bring the camera in just to kind of get a bit more of a feel for the actual tent as well and the sizing of everything. So, as you can see, you've got a really nice sort of depth canopy. It works probably even better when that sort of front door's off, but you've got the versatility to do what you wanted to. And we've got the uh, sort of carabiner clips that we talked about initially. So your carabiner to hanging points, but then also your little poppers to put the cable. There's also a pre-sewn uh, Sony and Velcro part there, and that's gonna basically allow you to um, use the kind of saber lights that Camper do. So again, it means that you can have almost a saber light on every single beam, one single remote control controls at all, and also uh, a single cable point as well. So it all runs off one socket. Decent size sort of living area space. And you can see what I'm talking about when you've got that sort of panoramic kind of view. So you can look for every single panel and get that visibility. I mean, we've got the annex situated on there and it creates that sort of dead end space. And like I said, you've got a vent and then little toggle points to kind of go there. The ground sheet comes applied. I've not put it in for time being because I just want to use it almost like a wet area. So I can hang my coats in there. I can drip all it likes and not collect in the bottom. But you've got mesh doors on either side as well as the mesh on top. And again, you see how I was talking about sculpting. You've got material there, so it's all really nice and covered. The kind of pound system on top and bottom works really well. So you can see it sort of feels like the bedroom is completely integral to the tent, but you've also got the flexibility to take it out. You've got storage pockets located down the side here as well. So you can put things like phones and torches, easily accessible in the middle of the night. And again, it all falls into a little pocket with, again, you've guessed it, a little popper just to kind of keep it. So you can kind of have the doors fully open and you haven't got to worry about rolling it to a big wedge on the side. The back storage section not only gives you access obviously to the storage area, but what you can also find is that you can always use it if you want to elongate the bedroom. So the bedroom's 225, uh, 225 centimeters is long enough, but if you want to just to drop that down, put your feet through there on the camp bed, you can quite happily do that. Like I said, you've got a big wide opening and these little ventilation points here. And you can see how much sort of kind of storage area you've got. But it'll take you, you've got access from every single bedroom. And as you sort of kind of go back, you can see how much kind of rear storage area you've got. 
you know, goes back quite a way to be fair. And like I said, as we come into the bedrooms, you can see almost how dark it is in the reflection. And you can really contrast the difference in light when you sort of turn around straight away, the difference in there. Or you can even use this sort of stereo chair for the dog quite happily. But uh, let's have a little look on the outside and sort of a bit more of a wander around the tent just to kind of get a bit more of the feel for it. Like I said, I think in terms of the way it sits and the way it looks, it does look really nice and premium. And you've got kind of this beautiful kind of structure to get the water raining. And then you've got a little rain safe door, like I said, on the outside. So it's really nice. You've got this beautiful sort of ceiling based that works really well. You've also got things like a little uh, orange point down here. Uh, and that's basically kind of a folding uh, guide. So when you fold the back point to that point there, you can quite happily pack it away and it'll fit back in the bag. And merely it kind of goes against our own personal way we pack tents up, but it gives you a bit more of an idea about guessing. It's gone the other way, Arch. You've got the, obviously the pole system at the back here is the reason why you've got that sort of back storage section. So it kind of almost looks like a bit like an old school, like Relin style tent, you know, with traditional kind of style. Works really well. And like I said, the coloring of this looks really nicely, especially when you've got the annex on, you see how it sort of bows and, and sort of matches quite smartly, well, especially when you look from the front, it kind of the footer all works really, really well. But again, something different, something unique, and we certainly like to see difference. It's been a, a bit more of a year over the years of all the same thing, different colors, and well, not different colors, gray, gray, or gray. And it's quite nice to have something a bit more, kind of, again, like a, like a nutmeggy kind of brown kind of scenario. Uh, and it works all really well with each other. Final things to mention are uh, things like things like the curtains again. They're all poly cotton. Um, it's all little things like that just add up. So a ground sheet does come included with when you buy the footprint. So the package deal we do for this, you get a footprint included for this front section as well. And it's two sort of entities. So your main body footprint as you go. But all in all, really, really nice tent. I'm not gonna lie, pricey, but you can always check out our latest price we've got on this and the deals we've got on the go via the link below as well as all information about pack sizes, pack widths. Uh, in fact, that's one of the things I've not mentioned. So it's around about sort of 67 kilograms. So it's weighty and that's because it's polycotton. One thing I would say is that in its sort of down point is it's got a, just a bog standard bag, hasn't got a roller bag, but arguably if you do like a tent enough, we do sell roller bags for about 70 pounds and they're really big, bulky design for the Antara sort of one. So it's a fast pack. Where's your frisbee gone? Go find it. So it's really big, gets it down easy, you've got compression straps. You can buy the bag as a separate on its own, really, if you really wanted to. So lots of talking about. Obviously, it took a long time to go through it all, but there's so many different points is trying to illustrate why it's different to whatever else is in the market. And yes, you do pay for that, but arguably you do get that in this tent. So that's kind of our little video review on the new Dometic Ascension in the TC601, and like I said, we've got a separate video on the 401. Um, but any more information on help you need, just follow the link below, contact us directly via our website or email address. Um, and yeah, that's kind of everything really. So thanks again for watching, uh, and we hope to see you again soon.